What's going on, people? Uncle Hotep back at it again. I'm on the Kali. Once again. I still have, uh, you know, I was banned. I got a new account and they, 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 they still haven't let me post. You know, they haven't enabled anybody's new accounts. Maybe they're, I don't know what the hell is going on. You know, it's one big echo chamber, I guess. But anyway, you know, every once in a while you have some gems, a post, and a random road cost this one. How was the 94 crime bill viewed by black Americans during that time period? That's the question of the day. You know, and, you know, they successfully, they used that against Hillary. Uh, it looks like they're trying to use that against uh, Biden. Now, Biden is taking them like, hey, man, it did its job, man. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Which the way Hillary kind of did, but she didn't do it. Then she kind of backed down. She should have stuck to her guns. Now, this says, I don't want to hindsight opinion or viewpoint. Plenty of people say they regret it now. I'm strictly speaking strictly about 1994. How did the majority of African Americans view the bill when it was first passed? Now, this was during the height of the crack era. Them rocks was running crazy. <laughs> Niggas was getting on. <laughs> Robbing people on the streets. Let's look and see what these jokers is talking about. This this person, too young to remember, brings out the, you know, Arsenio Hall and Bill Clinton jokes. The same way things or today, most people don't pay attention. You also have to remember there wasn't social media, so any info was coming strictly from news and newspapers. Crime spiked when the crack era began. Violent crime and murder rates probably peaked when the bill was passed. I saw this question whenever I asked this question whenever this topic comes up. Outside of innocent people getting railroaded on fake charges, what problem do you have with tough on crime <laughs> measures? Streets were killing fields at one point in the different cities across the country. Was the government supposed to allow the violence to continue? Yeah, man. Like, New York back then was wild, man. <laughs> it was crazy numbers. You look at those crime numbers. Like, it's like two different worlds. If you want to look at it, if you will look at it today, and then, and then 94, unbelievable. Most black politicians and leaders supported a solution to rising drug and gang related crime that plagued black communities. In retrospect, it did a lot of harm. There are a few older heads on the, in here who commented on this topic before and stated crime was a big issue during this time. Now this as <laughs> crime was black people wanted, even though it was completely unnecessary since crime was falling. No, that made crime fall though. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Once they start handing out those football numbers. <laughs> after a while, they was like, oh, man, we, we started like, hey, man, we got to fall back. That time. Cats start, after they start running in and out of records for the fifth, sixth time, they were like, hell no, man, let me lay down. Let me, let me fall back. They got enough of that prison knowledge. You know? <laughs> in them law libraries. Now, this person said the 1996 Telecommunications Act was worse. That's when allowed, he said allowed Clear Channel to buy up everything, all them black radios and everything else. Which is probably true. That was probably, you know, the media, getting in control of media is uh, way more important than, you know, this crime bill. Because if you, you can control what you can put in people's brains, you have to think like that. This guy said, save my life, most likely. <laughs> the bill was supported by many black people. The biggest issue with this debate is that it's being driven by people who have no frame of reference for the 90s. I was a kid living in Detroit at the time. and My mom, mom was a member of the block club. And they were constantly protesting violence, calling the police on loiterers, etc. 
The crime stats of the era are crazy. Something needed to be done and black people were demanding it. If you want to argue the crime bill went too far and it had negative consequences, fine, do that. But this idea that it was some plan concocted by evil white people and hurled on top of their helpless black people was laughable. Communities wanted more cops on the streets and in neighborhoods. A major complaint in the 80s and 90s was the lack of police presence allowed violence and gangs to take over. The bill was aimed at addressing that. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that, you know, this was something, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back as an adult, it appears that was overreaction of the problem. I never agreed with three strikes and didn't learn about the crack cocaine sentence, sentencing disparities until I was a late teen. So in the context, we were wrong because that was an equal application of the law across racial and social boundaries. But truthfully, crime appeared to be all around. My high school really was like the movie Lean on Me. No exaggeration. I had homies that used to sell dope to the security guards at our school. Jesus Christ. God damn! Lunchtime was the open drug market with adult dope fiends lingering, lingering across the street. Easy money. So many fell victim to the game. Now, some of these groups, NWCC, I guess they called it a crime against the American people. Congressional Black Caucus, Caucus criticized the bill itself and introduced an alternative bill that included investments in prevention and alternatives to incarceration. Um, <laughs> so it looks like some of the, you know, the, the NAACP, I don't know if you can call them, you know, quote unquote, um, black leaders, you know, <laughs> we are like the NAACP. We prove it's not a black organization. Um, I'm not, I'm saying what the people wanted, the we people wanted, um, a solution. Now we can argue about, you know, what, what that the the proper solution was but they wanted answers they wanted needed it fast um i don't know how to call it man you know um no i was you know i was an adult back then you know i mean i think i graduated in 91 um but i think i might have been in, i was in the service by then i think um i think or I might have been going into. So I might not have been in the States for a minute. You know what I'm saying? But um, I, ne I never heard. It was like the, the reaction that people are getting to today. It wasn't this, it, it wasn't the same. You know, um, to be honest, the actual answer, you know, like you can't complain about the crack and cocaine sentence and disparities. But if 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 black people were on their dean, they wouldn't be messing with uh, the white man's dope anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the true uh, uh, gist of it. You know, we we only really have ourselves to blame. You know, and and going back and saying, "Hey, man, y'all y'all screwed us with this crime bill." No, we were screwing ourselves, and the white man reacted. <laughs> <laughs> the white folks and government reacted. Now, do you want to solve a problem yourself? Or are you going to want somebody else to solve it for you? Because you might not like somebody else's solution. You see what I'm saying? It's easy peasy. You talk to Uncle Hotep. I'll give you the, the one too. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. Um, Please donate Patreon, PayPal, 
um, CoinBits app. You can donate Bitcoin to me. Um, check us out every Thursday night. Hotep's been told you at 8. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Hey, folks. We give you gems here. Where are you going to get these gems? These life gems. <laughs> Don't worry. Hotep's been told you. Hotep's been told you.